the weekend. You didn't catch me. That was the whole cold open. Y'all ruined everything. Five, four, three, two. <laughs> What's up? It's your girl, Kira, and welcome Luke, to Mocha in the Morning. Now it's just Look. lukewarm. Wow. <laughs> I'm sorry it's lukewarm, people, because my first time in the big adult chair, and I'm not exactly sure how this is supposed to go. Show. I'm loving your fashion. Can we get, like, an up and down on this? Thank it's you. Very I love it. Thank you. How I'm are you? I am just, like, family show. <laughs> You're giving away all the brew. Okay. And, and introducing our Cafe Con Leche Jorge. <laughs> hey. Hi, everybody. How are you? Did everybody have a good Memorial Weekend? How was yours? No, but your hoop earrings made me want to play basketball. Oh, who? I love that. I'm trying to give like 1990s banji girl. Like that's what I'm. That's what I'm doing with the big poop earrings and all the color and stuff. I love it. Goodness. So I love have anything big and round and with holes in it. With holes. See, I don't even know where to go with that. No, nope, we'll be right back. We'll be right back. <laughs> Mocha in the Morning is brought to you in part by the Portico Cafe, where conversation, connection, and community create change. Three, two, one, drop! Welcome back. It's your girl kicking it with Kia in the big girl chair. So She's excited. right here. So let's go ahead and get started with some steamers. Steamers, So yes. the After Maria film has dropped. Yeah. Um, it is a documentary exploring the aftermath of all the hurricanes. Mm -hmm. And I know you've taken a look at it. So I how, did. So how was it? Is well, it, um, it was interesting because, you know, I, I have, you know, family in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. And you get so many different versions of the story of what happened, you know, um, during... Uh, Hurricane Maria and of course the after story. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people think that, you know, Puerto Rico is on the up and up and, you know, on that bounce back. And yeah, if you're like on a cruise ship visiting, you know, San Juan, but uh, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. uh, this particular documentary actually documents um, uh, three different families mm -hmm. who are still on the struggle and still are displaced, have no jobs and nowhere to live. And that's, it's it's so sad. But you know, we're rolling into hurricane yeah. season and we want to make sure you all understand if your TV show is preempted because the meteorologist is on the screen explaining to you about yeah. the dangerous weather, yeah. then you need to pay attention to it. There was actually a weatherman um, who was in Ohio, yeah. I think it was Ohio, and people were actually sending him awful tweets while he's on the air trying to save people's lives in Ohio. Yeah. And people actually died from that tornado. So yeah. I'm sorry you missed The Bachelor, but people and are... plus, you're not getting a rose anyway. Uh, uh, so. Exactly. So let's talk about uh, Brexit. I thought we weren't talking about Oh, yeah. Yeah, we decided we are going to skip that. So, um, <laughs> if you're watching this show right now and you want us to talk about Brexit, hey, leave us a comment. We'll get back to it. But we, what we do want to yeah. talk about really quick is how it is officially, finally, the official kickoff of the campaign season. We have yeah. had people announcing all year round, 20 months in advance, but it's officially the kickoff of the political season. What are there, 40 candidates now running? I think the I might side? run for president. You, A, everybody else is running, why not? I think my dog is running. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's going to be a crazy political season. Joe Biden is still in the lead. Trump yeah. is still in the office. There's only, I think there might be one Republican yeah. candidate going up against him. But it's 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 going to be a crazy, crazy season. But let's talk about some more, like, fun stuff. Yay. Let's talk about who is owning all of Las Vegas. Your queen. Hey. Your queen. Damn it, damn it, damn <laughs> it, damn it. Well, it seems like every celebrity is like dropping by of to course. catch her show. Absolutely. Uh, not to mention Beyonce and Kelly Rowland was up in their VIP dancing and singing. We got the receipt. I mean, this is Janet Jackson. I mean, think about the catalog of music this yeah. woman has. We're talking about 20 years worth of music she had to put out. So I, I honestly, if I had the money and the funds, I would be like the first one there Bam. in VIP front row doing this. So congrats to her. She's really had a good bounce back after this oh, divorce. Oh my, she's, at, she's so winning. She really is. And I just think she's just doing it because like, you know, this is her thing. She really... 
Like, you, you just, she's loving it. And the gigs keep coming. And, like, I just love to see the, all the other celebrities. Like, I mean, Gabrielle Union was there, Johnny Gill. It's Beyonce, a sign of respect. Kelly, That's what yeah. it is. It's a sign of respect. People, respect people his icon. whole family. Absolutely. You know? Every, it was really, really awesome. But not everybody's that. having fun in Vegas. I guess Meek Mills is, is not really having a great time. I guess he got yeah. kind of kicked yeah. out of the club because of capacity. Yeah. He thinks true. it's racism. It could just be capacity. Vegas is a crazy place. They don't really care about your race. They care about the money. So maybe he's flashing up at the door. Yeah. How are you going to hate from the outside of the club? <laughs> you can't even get in. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back with all the piping hot topics. Woo! And you get to do it. I'm so excited. Like, I'm so excited. Right here. And of course, we have a very special Mocha in the Morning contributor again today. So we'll be right back after this. High five! Yeah! back to Mocha in the Morning. I'm your girl Kia and it's time for some piping hot topics. Ooh, and we have a wonderful <laughs> guest here. Yay! Look at that. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm surrounded by all this like, it's like, just, I feel like I have a box of chocolates in front of me. Oh, very nice. But we have Elle Edwards here from the All Tea All Shade podcast. All Tea No Shade. No See, shade. I like, I'm Palm all trees shade. already. Oh my gosh. Palm See, trees and, already. And we both practiced this like five times and yeah. still I managed to get it wrong. <laughs> Y'all already know how this works, how this goes. And as usual, we have our other favorite um, contributor, Miss Jen Dobson. How you doing, girl? Hi. I love you in blue. You look so good. Thank you. So I'm going to need you, Jorge, to start off with this first topic. <laughs> I you, love it. You, I didn't know what you're to see. He just what, looked at her what, like. What happens? I'm looking at the morning. Like, it's different when, like, you're, like, on set. It's all different. in front of the cameras and, like, you know, you're in the comfort of your own home or your office. Or it's like different. Calling, you know, it's just like, I'm so excited to see what's going on. I can't with him. <laughs> so, no, actually, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, this is kind of sad because, like, we're wrapping up yeah. you know, our season because, <laughs> ooh, Lord knows we need a break. Yeah, summer break. And um, and we're going to show you a picture of all the fashion that's going on right now because it's, like, like, really cute. Ooh. But we're going to keep it at a medium shot today. <laughs> but anyways, um, yeah, there's a lot of popping hot topics that we're going to talk about. The first thing is... Um, Netflix and how they are standing with women. And yes. so I'm gonna let the women handle this. Okay, so what they're saying is no, okay. oh, no. <laughs> let the queen go first. Go ahead. Oh yeah. yes, let's go. <laughs> no, I will leave it to the people who can have babies. Go ahead. Well, I think it's impressive. I think it's I mean Netflix doesn't have to come out and say anything. Mm -hmm. Um so they could have remained quiet. I was I didn't I wasn't realize how much things were shot in Atlanta. Like Black yes. Panther was shot yeah. in Atlanta. Yeah, that's like the Hollywood of like the South. It yeah, really, they really do call it the Hollywood of the South. And it's not just Netflix who is backing out. A lot of production companies are saying, Hey, if you're gonna do this and we don't need to, to film here, so it's it's gonna have a big deal. So Jen, could this have a big issue on Georgia for finance reasons? Yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, anytime, you know, a state does something and not think about the long-term repercussions financially, it's going to hurt them. They didn't even think about it because they're more concerned about their old ideology of what's right and not right and all of this stuff. But financially, if Netflix backs out and some of these other big companies I saw, like um, Jordan Peele and all of them were like, look, we don't support this. We believe that women have every right to choose. If they all back out, Georgia is going to lose a ton of money. So, Absolutely. and yeah. you know what? If Netflix and production companies are backing out, but what people don't know, some people may know this, but the main Delta hub is in Atlanta. Oh. So if Delta backs out, if they say, "Well, hey," and they we're going to move our hub because of this, that could be That's a huge, huge deal. That's huge. And Atlanta, I think they have a thirty percent credit for businesses, so they're actively trying to get businesses to come to Atlanta for Hollywood purposes. And so they've kind of shot themselves a little bit in the foot because there's also actresses who have been going off on it. Yeah. Um, so actress Mila Jovanovich and actress Jamila Jamil have all been sharing their stories of you know their abortions that they've had. And a lot of actresses are and actors are sharing this and it's affecting everybody. Yeah, really, really and I don't think states are really processing that this is a huge deal. Yeah. No, it's, and, well anyways, um, speaking of Netflix and doing the thing, 
Wanda Sykes new special on Netflix. I love. Not normal. You have to, have to, have to watch it. I love it. She's hilarious. I haven't seen it. It's oh, it's hilarious. I'm the guilty one. Yeah. It's really funny. Okay, wait. Can, can I ask a question? Sure. Yes. Do you like Wanda Sykes comedy normally? Yes. Well then, no. No. See, no. 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 I'm with you. I don't normally like no. her her comedy. I, this is the first special I've watched where I've been like, oh, she really is funny. Because normally I don't find her funny. Yeah, okay. Well, maybe I'll give it a try because I don't think that she's that funny. I, I think, think the struggle is. is so real for her. So? Well, wait, 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 Jen. What What do you think? Do you think she's funny? Look. It, it was so good, okay? Oh. I watched it and I was done. Like when she comes on stage and the first thing she starts talking about is like, listen, if you voted for Trump, that is your first mistake. If you came to this show, that is your second mistake. <laughs> hilarious okay it was it was funny the whole way through so i give her mad props like i died the whole night like it was funny what, what i thought was great is that she took some very volatile political issues mm -hmm. and managed to kind of remedy her comedy around it where i mean she had a perspective a message yes. it was comedic and it wasn't like you felt like, oh, look at her, she's just going in, da, 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 da. No, and then she made it sound, um, you know, like this is her everyday life. It was relatable. When she talked about her comedy her life special and her kids was relatable. And stuff like that. And yeah. that's something I feel like a lot of comics are missing. I mean, Kevin Hart, to me, he's starting to be not relatable anymore because a lot of his stories are a little like, oh, in my I big house. And anything. Anything. Really? He was in Soul Plane, right? Oh, don't, don't do that. Don't, don't really? go back to Soul Plane. Hey. <laughs> really? We're going to take it all the way back to Soul Plane. Soul Plane. We, we, we moved. We moved. We are changing subjects. I'm just a huge ally of his. <laughs> All right. Well, it is Mental Health Awareness Month, yes. and yes. Kanye is actually speaking out. He actually did an interview with David Letterman, kind of having a little bit of conversation about mental health and his mental health situation. But I really don't feel like holding up Kanye as the mental health spokesperson. So I'll let the other two people here talk about it's that. It's hard. It's so for, hard. It's oh, hard for me to try to navigate, like, is Kanye being like truthful? Or is he being commercial? Like, I never know what his agenda is. I'm so confused, I, and I really want to know. I don't think he knows his agenda. Yeah, I like just, I don't think he knows. I just wish he on. was like stronger. I don't and think he knows his message. But his experience, because again, he's coming out because apparently when he was having his mental health situation, he was actually handcuffed to a bed, and of course that can be cruel and unusual punishment for someone who's who's having mental health. And the hospital claims they're doing it for safety reasons. Mm. But, you know, Jen, still still doing that to somebody, it's, it's a little bit hard. So, Jen, think, what do you think? Is he, is he stunting and showing? <laughs> no, the Kanye is a hot mess. Okay. So, I mean, I learned a lot about his mental health issues and the fact that like, you know, he had to be like basically constrained and all of this stuff, like a lot of things that I didn't know about his situation, but we all know that he's got, a, he's got some mental issues. Um, I don't think that he deserves to be the spokesperson on this because he doesn't handle it well. It would be one thing if, if he had mental issues and he's handling it well, but he, 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 he pops off and he does crazy stuff and and he needs to get it together. So it's really hard to like see him in that in that way, you know? I love it. Okay. I do. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, mean, I like it. Help me figure this out. Because if you are in a similar situation, right? So Kanye came out two and a half years ago that he's bipolar. Mm -hmm. He has manic uh, episodes yeah. and he talked a little bit in his interview mm -hmm. about those manic episodes. It comes out as like extreme paranoia. And so he has these huge upsets, but then you also see him where he's calm, he's relaxed, he's got his life situated. And to me, that's more relatable, right? Because mm -hmm. he's a real human being, right? Yeah. If you have mental health issues and um, you're the spokesperson, but you never have any... Like breakdowns or meltdowns. Yeah, you don't ever see any display. fluctuation. It might be hard to relate if you're going through a situation, right? But if you are somebody who has kind of some kind of mental issue and you see that he's struggling with it, then you don't feel quite as alone, I would say. And we've talked about this in the show um, about me and my attempt to commit suicide. When I woke up from coma, I was taped to the bed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And apparently they don't do that because you're going to hurt yourself. They're trying to keep you from pulling cords out. So I don't know if he had maybe lapsed into a coma or passed out and they were trying to keep him from harming himself or pulling out cords well, but that's why they told me that I, I was literally like taped to the side of the bed so yeah. that I wouldn't um, touch anything and he was involuntary 
So I'm sure that's different. That's handcuffs. She's right. That's handcuffs. yeah. He that's handcuffs. he he was put in <laughs> the handcuffs. he was held involuntary. So that's why he yeah, had handcuffs. That's handcuffs. So well, I, I hope it all works out for him. But they say these are the most creative people and yes. artistic people. You know. He kind of said that. He said, you want the crazy music, you want the crazy ideas, you want this next level thinking. Well, sometimes all these crazy things have to come from a crazy person. And those are facts. Those and are so absolute facts. He's eight months off his meds, though. So. Yeah. Oh, all right. Ooh, that's a lot we, of were, we were so close to being on his side How about that? until oh. that. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> we're going to move on to the next topic. And this is kind of keeping along with the Mental Health Awareness Month. And that's about Lamar Odom. He has penned a memoir called um, Darkness to Light. And it's really about his relationship with Khloe Kardashian, his relationship with his mother, um, how he kind of got into being an addict and where he is today. And it's a really, really good um, story. And I think we have a clip of that right now. It's really a story of triumph and over overcoming obstacles. Over a lot of tragedy. And tragedy, overcoming tragedy as well. That, I, I have a whole different perspective on him now. Do you? Oh, oh, girl, don't stop. <laughs> do you do I, you have a different perspective on him? I do. What's changed? He's always been known for not being the best. I get it. He was also known for not being the best, but he really was a drug addict, and it went through hiding the drug addict and hiding a sex addiction and just trying to, and then you're throwing that whole thing into the spotlight. It's like basically throwing gasoline on a fire. Yeah. What is it about the Kardashian family that like <laughs> it's something either? Uber I could make a joke or uber tragic. I think their vaginas are literally the sunken place, but that's just my personal opinion. <laughs> so um, mean. Jen, what do you think, real quick? So mean. <laughs> um, well, that went left very quickly. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> honestly, you know, I, I like the fact that he did write this memoir. Um, I, I think that that writing a book and really explaining to the world what you have gone through is a really important step. But at the same token, I still feel like he was a really horrible husband and he wasn't the best person. And he almost allowed his fame and, and, and you know, being married to a Kardashian to, to go out and kind of throw his life away. So, I mean, I don't give him any brownie points for writing the book. Although I do appreciate the fact that now we kind of get to know a little bit more about him, oh, but no, I never like him. I don't mean to cut you off, Jim, but that's just leading me to like my question here is kind of like, did anyone ask him to write a book? No, no, like, who all, not one. Like, you don't even know who he is. Like, what is? She's like, what right. is the point of all? Like, I don't like. I think what is he, the point of all that? Like, what? I don't really care about this man. Like, I don't want to know. About the point him. is for him to make no, a couple no, million no, dollars. Think he's on the same page, so. yeah. I think he's actually trading on his ex Kardashian connections, right? Ooh, because if yeah, he was not, like. everyone always says that Kardashians use the men they're in with, and when actually it's the reverse, right? Because ah. he's using the fact that he was connected to Chloe. He has that Kardashian connection to now have this memoir. In, in all the interviews, Chloe always comes out. He always talks a lot about the Kris Jenner, about Chloe. So I think he's actually using them to sell his book. So it's the other way around this time. Uh, are you going to buy the book? No. No. Oh. But I may download it illegally. Oh, I'm, yeah, we both know the same topic. No, I'm not down. I think I have a different perspective, but I, I think Elle's right. Like, yeah. Just joking. Just, no one, just no one asked him for this book. Yeah, like, no one was saying, oh, I'm dying to hear what Lamar has to say. Like, yeah. nah, you got high and now he's claiming that the brothel owner tried to kill him which yes. i just think that's a far-fetched story and um r.i.p dennis hoff he passed away uh but yeah. i some of the story just well, you know, if you watch if you watch if you watch the um uh oh goodness gracious you got it yeah it's coming yeah it's, it's, it's coming there. It's here. If, if you watch uh game of thrones yes right like you'll know that some crazy stuff happens in brothels I'm only, uh -huh. I'm this is true i'm only on season six <laughs> So I'm trying to catch up. Girl, I mean, you wasn't a lot of brothels. Sorry, I'm, I'm just kind of I was like, girl. Okay. <laughs> okay. You missed <laughs> season one through five? <laughs> <laughs> brothels, harems, all that lead us to our next piping hot topic. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's a horrible segue. Ooh, what a segue. Yes. We can't do her like that. That's not quite a magical <laughs> carpet ride, is it? No, my God. <laughs> okay, so before we get in trouble for cultural insensitivity, um, <laughs> The movie Aladdin came out this weekend and it's getting a lot of great reviews, but it is getting a little bit of criticism. People are saying that the movie has been whitewashed and basically meaning that instead of having people who looked a little bit more 
Arabian, which is not a thing, but a little bit more Persian, a little bit more Indian. They look more European with dark hair and dark Well, they features. say that the bad guys look more like Arabic, and, but then like the good guys, like the princess and Aladdin and stuff, yeah. have more like Western features. European features, yeah. Okay, so oh, I'm going to say something really messed up <laughs> that I feel like you are, everybody's going to agree with me about, but doesn't Tyler Perry do the same exact thing in his movies? Isn't the good guy the light-skinned guy and the bad guy the dark-skinned guy? And why can't Medina be pretty? Well, I... Al, can, can we all take a moment of silence <laughs> for Jorge and his Medea <laughs> question? We're so sorry Ooh, that Medea... Okay. Yeah, we're sorry Medea's not pretty. Anyway, <laughs> go, Al. Yes. I mean, I think it's kind of just a little insane. I mean, they actually went and consulted um, Middle Eastern like consultants and Muslim consultants to make sure that they were actually being sensitive, right? So it's not that they went in willy-nilly. It's not like a black person or a white person all of a sudden playing Cleopatra, right? It's They actually casted people of Middle Eastern descent. But I do see what the article was saying or what a lot of the commentators are saying is that the, the darker, the more visibly Middle Eastern, right, people are, tend to be the, the bad guys. And the good guys, while they are, you know, Middle Eastern, they all are fair featured, right? They have more European um, aesthetics. Mm -hmm. And so I get they the argument. Proper English. Right. I oh, get yeah. the argument both ways, but I don't know. I, I, I kind of fall on the fence with this one. What about you, Jen? Good. Yeah, so historically, this has been a problem. Like, this isn't the first movie. This is like every single movie ever. So mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm not surprised. Like, why are we surprised? We could go back and watch almost every movie in America and find the same thing where it's darker skinned people are the bad guys, mm -hmm. lighter, more European, better English speaking are the good guys. It's always been that way. And it's unfortunate because even though they did get consultants, you have to understand that those consultants still have those self images. All of us do, even black people have self images of darker skinned black people being bad guys and believing that black people and dark skinned people are bad guys because it's always been perpetuated on us historically. So it doesn't surprise me. I, I haven't seen the movie, so I, I don't know for sure, mm -hmm. but I'm sure that that's what's happened. Absolutely, and see, here's the bigger conversation that we all mm. need to have. Is it Hollywood or is it us? Mm. Is it the cultures? Right. right. Is it the Latinos? Is it the black people? Is it the Middle Easterners are saying, oh, dark is bad, curly hair is yep. bad, right. braids and dreads are not professional. Who is Hollywood is following how we are reacting? Well, it's got to be, there's, there's got to be some fine line there because in order for things to be commercially successful, mm -hmm. right. that means yeah. a lot of people have to find it appealing. Have to find it appealing. Right. So I'm always uh, an advocate of, if you're not happy with what you see, well then create what you want to see. Yeah, amen. And do exactly. it your way. And you cast whoever you want to be cast in whatever it is that you're doing. And that truly is going to be the only way that things are going to change. We yeah. can't necessarily depend on a money-making machine to create things that aren't going to necessarily make the money. And I think a lot of times we forget at the end of the day and at the end of the film, at the end of the album, at the end of whatever it is, they want to sell tickets. They want to sell promotional items. They want to sell everything to you. So they want to sell it to the biggest market. And I feel like what we do is a perfect example of that. We haven't seen ourselves in a lot of things. So now we create our own platform where we see people who look like us or do yeah. what we do in gin situations. Yeah. So, you know, I, I agree. I, I actually haven't seen the movie, but I have seen a lot of the promo and, you know, we have to get to a point where we have to have the bigger conversation. So. It's weird because I, I want to play devil's advocate okay. a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Right. Can I do that? Absolutely. Yeah. All right. We always, and I always say minorities, colored folk, right? We want to be represented more. And so when we do have opportunities like Aladdin where colored people are represented, the staff was primarily like Middle brown. Eastern brown, yes. right? And even in these films that we have predominantly brown people, we're still complaining about it. I mean, oh, yeah. I think what we need to do is not complain necessarily about the fact that Aladdin is following the 
same scheme or same Game of Thrones, the same right. wheel, right? Right. Right. right? That, oh, that nah. has been happening. Nah. We, like Jorge says, we need to create something to add in addition to it, right? Okay. We need both. So Shonda, like, give us a call so we can, like, ask But I have out. to go off script a tiny right? bit, and our producer is going to murder me. Oh, God, here we go. She is. But didn't Spike Lee get in a little bit of trouble where people are saying, like, basically he's a sellout now, like, for the kind of the same situation where he's kind of selling out to Hollywood to make movies and make films, so isn't that the kind of the same situation again? Spike Lee needs to make a living, and he needs to get paid. That's all I'm gonna all say. Right. So, I if mean, you're not watching Spike Lee and buying his stuff, don't worry about it. I just think sometimes we have a very narrow viewpoint on minority-produced uh, content, Right, so if this was, if Aladdin was a all white cast, if it was not steep, like if it was in Alaska versus, you know, somewhere in the Middle East, and it had some Eskimo? of the similar, like, you know, similar things that we've talked about, no one would even question it, right? right it would yeah. be a non thing, right? There's so many Caucasian films where there's a bad guy, there's good guys, right? And the happy love ever. I think we tend to be extra critical mm -hmm. about colored films. And yeah. I think that kind of hurts us sometimes. Well, speaking of African Americans doing great things, and being where they should be, and I'm gonna let Jen lead off on this topic, it's the fact that in the 2019 graduating class at the United States Military mm -hmm. Academy, there were the most African American women graduating. Da, da, Jen, da, da, da. What, what do you think about that? It's really amazing. I, For me, like just to see that many of us you know, going through something that from what I've heard is so hard to do and to see all of us doing it, like so many of us doing it all in one place, I think it was absolutely amazing. Like, you know, kudos to them for, for that struggle. I couldn't have done it. There's no way. So, you know, mad props. Mm. I love anything in the uniform. <laughs> so I actually have a friend, um, a mentor. She was actually one of the GMs for Walmart. Now she's the GM for JC Penney's and Bloomingdale's and she's actually a West Point graduate and she's an African American woman. So it means a lot when we have African American women or even anybody female graduating from these elite military academies. It's it's hard. It's amazing and they're doing their thing. And if you look at like first of all shout out to the black women who are represent and making it happen, right? What? Especially in West Point. Because two thousand seventeen the chief cadet African-American mm -hmm. woman. Uh, 2018, they had 24 African-American women graduate. Obviously, to this 2019, they're expected 34, mm -hmm. right? So we're con they're continuously growing. They're continuously showing up and showing out, which is what black women do, right? right is what they do on this show right now. Yeah, hey, absolutely. <laughs> All right, don't mind if we do. <laughs> and black women apparently are showing out all over the place, including Cannes. Film director Mati Dua, did I say that right? Yo, girl, oh, do it. it. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Becomes the first ever black woman to win the award. Woo! So congratulations to her. Yeah, 75 um, years of this. Yeah, yeah. Years. It's, yeah. It's not even the black first black woman to win the award. She's the first black contestant. Yeah, ever black, entered. Black woman contestant that ever entered. Ooh. So she entered and won. How powerful is that? It's amazing. Hashtag snatching trophies. I mean, that's... Snatching wigs and snatching trophies alike. Come on, Jen. <laughs> Jen, give it to me. What do you think? Look, I don't even know. <laughs> but I think, I think, you know, ultimately, I think it's pretty amazing. Like everything that we're doing culturally and, and, you know, throughout history, I think is showing who we are. So, you know, I'm, I'm a hundred percent all for it all the way. Look, uh -huh. it just goes to show that black women cons do anything. Calm. Yes, me too. I, I think that. I see what you put me I know. Out. He always I, has it. He takes it to the next level every single day. I peaked it. So we're going to keep in the same entertainment thing, um, same entertainment topic, and I'm throwing this away because we're just going to have a really funny conversation about Bob Hart's Abishola. So what we're going to do is we're going to have you all watch this trailer, and we're going to come back and have a conversation about Bob Hart's Abishola. Mm. Take a look. Bob Hart's Abishola, a new comedy coming to CBS this fall. You look like an angel. What happened? You had three stents put in. Is that a lot? For a man your size, no. Ah, oh, I was next door getting a checkup for the old ticker. I thought I'd bring you some more sauce. Why don't we pick this up uh, another time? Good plan. Wait. Yeah? Leave the socks. 
Who would like to start? Okay, so I'm like, <laughs> if, you're, if you're watching, I'm going to your volume up, and I need to lean in a little bit. Okay. That's all I have to say. <laughs> I call bullshit. Go over it. Oh, wait, I'm not allowed exactly, to Exactly, exactly. We Can you exit out that out? <laughs> viewers? Leave me. <laughs> viewers, we knew this was going to happen. That's what we let her leave. So we're just going to stare at her and let her do this. Go. Why can't the man be there? <laughs> it's so ridiculous. <laughs> Anytime you see these sitcoms, you always see, if they're interracial, it's always a Caucasian person who is not equal, I would say, in looks or body type. She means ugly and fat. The colored person, right? So you'll have, like, Sophia... Vagar. Right, totally. With Ted Bundy. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, no, no, you're right, you're right, no, you're, you're right. right. She's right. What? She's, she's right. What? Right. And to me, it's the same thing. You have this super hot, cute African nurse who's fit, right? And then you have this. You got Bob. <laughs> you have Bob. You got Bob. You got Bob. Jen? I'm... Jen? I, I was thinking exactly the same thing. Like, why is it that we have to, as black women, have to settle for this overweight, not that attractive guy that wants to be with us just because, and now somehow we're going to turn that into some kind of magical love story. Like, we should be so blessed to be with this middle-aged white man. Like, no. No. Well, okay, so now, wait, 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 wait. wait. third episode, he gets a gym membership. <laughs> you know that's not happening. Because here's why I think they're going to drag this Bob Hart's Abby Shola out. Because in the in the trailer, she is paying him dust. Like, she's not paying him any attention. Yeah. So they have to build this love story up. So maybe season two, three, she gives in. But the first season looks like he's having to do all the work. But I get what everybody is saying. Like, can, why couldn't she have been with a Bradley Cooper? Why can't it be yes. Abby Shola? That would have been, why I would have loved that. Why yeah. in my house? where I have a Bob. Your Bob's a, a yeah, very he's okay. super fabulous. And, and, and wealthy. <laughs> he keeps leaving that part out. Like, I'm, congratulations. Your Bob is great. But Bob's yeah. awesome. Bob is awesome. But it does run like a sick come in my house. So okay, we'll, we'll definitely, when the show comes out, I think it's coming out in the fall. I'm not sure if it's a summer show, but we'll watch it and get back to you. If not, you can do it on Watch Do Kia, your viewers Kia. interact? Yeah, totally. I mean, you guys, y'all yeah. need to post in these comments and let me let y'all let us know. Absolutely. Am I tripping? Because I just feel like it's what's the one with Leah Rimney? Oh, uh, the Scientology one. No, no, um, I'm, I'm Kings of Queens. Yes. Like Kings of something. You're not. Leah, super hot, cute, petite, yeah. gorgeous, oh, Latina. Wait, no, wait, we can do yeah. that for a lot of this. It's not even just about um black or brown girls going with white guys. It's every single TV <gasps> show. It's always a hot wife and Je the fat. The Jeffersons. Remember when George Jefferson would call his neighbors a zebra when he had the beautiful black woman wife, and then he had the husband who was the wife. You Lenny, are Lenny, aging Lenny, yourself. Lenny, no, I just do my research. <laughs> Oh, okay, because... Lenny Kravitz is a <laughs> Yes. She was totally gorgeous. Uh-huh. And then her husband yeah. on the show, not gorgeous. I've never seen... I've never... Have you seen the Jeffersons? Yeah. Well, no. I prepared for the show, so... The but there's a really hot picture of Lenny Kravitz, who's 50 years old. He just did, like, yeah. a topless yeah, shirt. That's true. And yeah. it was like... We might just post that now just because we want to. <laughs> like, like everybody to see. She's yeah. been dying to show these shoes, by the yeah. way. Like, that's why she just did that. <laughs> You know, I had to throw them up. No tea, no tea, no shade. <laughs> no tea, no shade. We will be all tea, no shade. You got me saying my own name wrong. This is so exciting. <laughs> we will be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to Mocha in the Morning. I would love to thank our contributor, Elle, oh from God. the All Tea No, no Shade Podcast. Thank you. Josh, I don't want to mess it up. Wednesday, Wednesday. Yes. Everywhere, Wednesday, everywhere where you can receive podcasts. And this week we're talking about abortion and a father's rights. Should fathers have rights when it comes to abortion? Oh, we will definitely be listening to that no. show. That is definitely yeah. a conversation. It gets me. <laughs> I, I cannot yeah. wait to hear it. We also want to say bye to our awesome Jen. And Jen, you have something awesome going on this weekend. Yeah, yeah, actually tonight, so Friday night, tonight, five to nine, um, I'm part of a great new nonprofit called GERM, which is giving essential resources to minorities. We're having a launch party at Hooch and Hive, so those in the Tampa Bay area, come out, support this. Um, it's really for us to try to get as many donations as we can so that we can provide assistance to those in need to actually be able to go to college. So this is a really important event. So anybody who's, you know, listening now in a few hours, just get ready to come out after work, 
Uh, meet us at Hooch and Hive. Come have some drinks and support this really great cause. You know what, Jen? When you talk, I just watch your mouth. Mm, not okay. Not I mean, you know, always tell, has to I'm make tell your husband. I mean. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jen. Bye. Love you guys. You too, Love you too. So and thanks all of you for watching Mocha in the Morning. This is our 23rd episode. Yeah. Oh my God, a, congratulations. I know, right? Of our second season, we're gonna take a cute little like summer break and come back even more fly and more fresh and with more flavor to your your morning blend. We can't going... go out unless we give them a Mocha moment. Okay. Right? Right. So, I mean, yeah. I feel like it's required. And I think the Mocha moment should be us. Oh. It absolutely is us. <laughs> Don't mind if we do. Again, thank you to everybody. Thank you for having me in the big kitchen. I know. It felt so good. It felt so good. So good. I hope so good. I hopefully when Keisha watches this, she'll be super proud. Maybe she'll, she'll be good. proud. Yeah. I think she'll be proud. She'll, she'll be, proud. be proud. Mama Mocha. Oh, that's Mama cute. Mocha. That's, a that's super adorable. We just came up with a hashtag for Keisha. Oh, Mama Mocha. Mama Mocha. And of course, to our producer. Oh my God, thank you so much. You don't get to see her a lot, but she deals a lot of gremlins. We yeah, that's and a lot of spreadsheets and a lot of time. Tables. A lot of equipment. A lot of equipment. You know, handling all the guests and everything like that. You're touching me up every once in a while. I mean, just she does know, all things. Doing the thing. So thank you so very much, and have a wonderful summer. We will be showing YouTube. Oh my God! So make sure you follow Book in the Morning. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're going to be, um, of course, sharing all of our episodes, and, and? we're also going to share a lot of unseen stuff. Absolutely, oh, yeah. and Ooh, kicking it, I want to see. And kicking it with, with Kia from the Mocha in the Morning show yes. will still be happening over the summer. So yes. you'll still get a little bit of Mocha in the Morning. Right. Right. You might even see some guest appearances. It's your little Mocha fix. Right. Thank you. Bye. Bye.